Hello, and we're back with aquaculture engineering. This is lecture six. Uh, this will be a review of the basic biological characteristics and requirements of milkfish or bangus. We are still in the series of topics on important aquaculture species. And well, uh, bangus or milkfish called scientifically as Chanos Chanos, is the national fish of the Philippines. At the end of this lecture, you should be able to uh, understand the characteristics and production cycles of milk, milk fish, learn the virus selection criteria in its production, identify the environmental and water uh, quality requirements for milk fish production, and likewise other uh, cultural practices and considerations in uh, the, the, the industry of milk fish production. Uh, considerations for the selection of milk fish as an aquaculture species include it be, being a commodity of particular use in value adding activities uh, such as with the uh, Japanese delicacy surimi, the bone and uh, the bone or and also Relianum bangus products and others. Okay. The technologies in the uh, production portion is also abundant, but the drawback is that uh, technologies in building are not that established. They are still unreliable and the fry supply is uncontrolled. Uh, the bangus is a commodity, especially in the Philippines, and that is because uh, it has been a staple food for the Filipinos and some other East Asian nations for a long time, for, for, for centuries even, and it will continue to do so. But the, 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 the uh, side note here is that since it is a commodity, it is of low economic value. Uh, another good thing is that because of, of this commodified product of bangus or milkfish, uh, there are a number of growing, or, or there is an increasing number of hatcheries worldwide with Taiwan and uh, Indonesia uh, in the main picture, okay, and because there are, uh, there's continued interest with with uh, milkfish, and there has been uh, an, an extensive. There's already extensive techno technologies out there, uh, the, which are the product of research and development. The re R and D, okay, the research and development continues to uh, progress or to move forward. All right, let's look into the uh, production cycle of milkfish. And let us begin with the five to seven year old broodstock uh, breeding in the natural environment. And the eggs numbering in millions are harvested. And they are placed in hatcheries where they uh, are fed with chlorella and bacchionus. Uh, the, the eggs hatch into larvae, okay? The larvae are fed chlorella and bacchionus for three to four weeks until they uh, mature into fry, or it could be also uh, still in the larva stage that the, they are transferred to nurseries where they now grow for 120 days. Now, uh, after the fourth week, okay, this is when the the, the fly, fry or larvae are transferred. Now, the, there are also cases where fry can already be uh, sold to the grow-out operators if that is the setup that they uh, have. So they are, the fry are uh, transported and there is a, an established protocol or technology or yeah, process for that. Now, the, the fish milk production, uh, let me tell you, is that is it is modular or integrated and um, 
so so that the uh, those that are reading the fry into fingerlings are different from those who grow the fingerlings into mature uh, milkfish. And also uh, in the integrated industry, there are the assemblers or distributors, dis the distributors who sell or market these fingerlings or fry to the grow out operators or growers. Now, and now it is the growers who grow the fingerlings or the juveniles in cages, tanks, ponds, or pens until they are ready for harvest after 150 days or uh, from four to five months. Uh, in the case of intensive growing setup, uh, the growing can take longer from six to seven months. And the ponds and tanks require seawater supplies or brine if if the set, uh, the the milkfish are not acclimatized to fresh water. Now uh, there's a another uh, production cycle that the CFTEC was able to uh, establish by uh, being able to uh, breed the broodstock in cap captivity. Uh, CFTEC or the Southeast Asian Fisheries Development Center based in Iloilo, Ilo, Ilo, Philippines, uh, were able to breed uh, eight to 10 year old broodstock in cap captivity and they were the first to do so. But uh, it's, it's just the same. Uh, so after the, the, the brood broodstock uh, spawn, eggs in millions, the eggs are similarly grown in nurseries and uh, transferred to the cages, tanks, and ponds, and pens for uh, growing the juveniles to maturity for harvesting. So just similar after, um, from, from hatchery to the grow out, uh, it follows the same fashion as the, uh, as those of the broodstock or the, the, the eggs captured from the wild. Now let's go to the environmental and water quality requirements. Uh, compared to other aquaculture species, uh, milkfish are sensitive to its habitat. And for uh, first and foremost would be critical uh, environmental requirement for water is the dissolved oxygen, which has which should be at optimum for milkfish uh, in the range 3 to 10 parts per million or ppm. Also, uh, we have here salinity and it should be maintained below 40 parts per tr trillion or ppt. Uh, and well, that level is already very salty because mil milkfish can survive in varying range, uh, varying or a wide range of uh, salinity from pure fresh water to uh, seawater and even higher. And, and it's because uh, milkfish can be acclimatized to fresh water conditions. Although in the natural environment, they grow in uh, salt water, brackish water, seawater. And so salinity is very is critical, particularly in the uh, growing of the natural food in the natural environment. And for high slip salinity, it favors the blue-green algae. And while the uh, the sal sal low salinity value values or those below 15 ppt, uh, those are best for filament filamentous uh, green algae or blue moth. The salinity of fish ponds fluctuates seasonally. It goes down uh, during the rainy season and goes up during the dry. Uh, next environmental requirement would be the water temperature, which should be between 25 to 32 degrees Celsius, because the uh, milkfish tends to grow slow, slowly or slows uh, down in growth at 23 degrees Celsius. For pH, optimum range is 6.5. Yeah, it's between 6.5 to 8.5 uh, values. Another key 
uh, factor is the presence of hydrogen sulfide, a product of the uh, decomposing material in ponds or um, yeah, ponds and um, tanks and cages and pens. Okay. Now, the hydrogen sulfide concentration should be below 2 ppm, otherwise the milkfish die by uh, poisoning. Uh, lastly, with the environment, okay, the weather affects greatly or the changes in weather can deplete the oxygen, uh, dissolved oxygen in the pond. And this is where aeration comes in. Milkfish production is what is called uh, integra integrated production. It is uh, divided among different players. Here we uh, discuss the cultural practices and considerations uh, in milkfish production. So again, there are nursery operators who grow the fry or fingerlings, and there are the assemblers or distributors who then sell uh, the fry and fingerlings to the grow out operators who then grow them uh, in ponds or pens and cages. Uh, the bootstock transport of milkfish is established and it involves uh, chemically sedating the fish uh, and supplying it with life support during transport. Okay. Nurseries transfer the fingerlings by established methods called pasulang or freshening method, seining, uh, training, gill netting, and stationary fish coral. Sorry. Uh, with regards to nutrition, milkfish eat naturally growing food, as we have said a while ago. And it uh, commercial feed can be introduced, but these are costly and requires good management for a uh, better or good return of investment. In terms of health, uh, the research and development were uh, as able already to identify because well, milkfish eat is a commodity, they are able to identify uh, significant diseases and pathogens in milkfish. But the good thing also, unfortunately, there are uh, test kits for these pathogens and also for off flavor detection. Okay. Uh, there are times uh, bangus tastes like lumot. Okay. And these test kits are readily available in the market for the growers or the grow out operators okay we are done with milkfish in the next four lectures we'll proceed with uh, the discussion of other key uh, uh, commercial species that are uh, grown in the philippines in for, for agriculture i'll be seeing you by then <laughs>